also have a game on July 14th at Tough Squad, Tanwai Rum. On your screens, you just saw a little while back the referees, and Fabiosa breaks the ice. Now, I think this is, you know, this since this is the second game that Julius Wayne will be playing as the new import for the Toyota team, Julius will feel a lot more confident and play a much better ball game. Jaworski on Cessna, nothing there, but Billy Ray Bates follows up. It is four to nothing. Okay, let's take a look at the matchups here. We'll notice first that uh, Billy Ray Bates has been assigned to a Nick Boulang, and it's Philip Cesar who enjoys a two-inch height advantage covering Julius Wayne. Him, Julius Wayne made 15 points in Cagayan the order. Inside attempt. Our referees like to mention it once more. Messrs. De La Cruz, Santarina, and Inosa. Well, both squads bring to the fore a tradition of frenzy and passion, and that passion definitely is not love. The first time that they met during the elimination round, phase one, May 29th, it was CRISPA 122-110 for Toyota. So far, it's all the way in. Yes, and the uh, Toyota defense so far has been quite poor, whereas the Redmondizers are playing very tough defense. It's very difficult for Toyota to penetrate, and they're forced to take outside shots. During their first encounter, Fabiosa had 18 points, two rebounds, and two assists. Nothing from Quadles after second attempt. Billy Ray Bates, the worst he's there, so he pulls out, waiting for the other teammates, the howl of the fans of the Redmondizers. Kidabin, low posting, but... Bulaung is right there, bouncing it to Atoiko, and there is illegal defense called against Toyota. Technical foul, Wayne. It is a technical foul against Wayne. You know, you really can't blame Julius Wayne for that one. He wasn't really cheating that badly. Uh, it's just that he was in the shaded area, uh, and uh, his player was about six or seven feet away. That was Philip Cesar. And I think Toyota is going to have to play some type of zone defense when they can get away with it just to stop this very strong Redmondizer team. So they may be caught floating every now and then. And Billy Ray Bates, last May 29, fired 51 points, 11 rebounds, 2 assists. So far he's got 3 points right now. Here is Julius Wayne getting banged by TJ. Doing the tough job, oh, Abiosa. Abiosa. Well, speaking of tough jobs, Julius Wayne has a very tough job on the Toyota Ball Club because standing at six foot one, he's going to have to do a lot of rebounding for this ball club. Right now, Julius is in the back court. Nothing from Rainbow Territory from the Big J. Here is Atoy Ko looking for room, a little push, and he gets the basket. But it's very poor defense there by Arnie Tuadlis. There was no way he was going to pick up the offensive foul. And he caught himself way off his man. 9 and 45 in the first period, and nothing yet from Toyota. It's 9 to nothing. Here is Koch quickly to Cesar, looking downstairs. Kidaben is there. He may take it by himself. First foul call against Fabiosa. Here is Julius Wayne suspending himself, and he draws a foul from Philip Cesar. Foul Cesar. Well, that's the best thing to do when your team has not been able to score points. Just put your head down and just drive to the hoop. Hope that the other team will commit the foul. This way you can break the momentum, go to the free throw line, and more importantly, break the ice. As early as 9 and 25 in the first period, Edo Campo does substitutions. Abbe King for Velosa, and here comes their big man, the money man, Mon Fernandez, checking in for Bulao. Well, here's an exact illustration of when, when you, if you don't start out with your top five players, you might get hurt. And this uh, starting five of Edo Campo hurt his ball club to a tune of nine to nothing. That's right. Here is Billy Ray Bates. Kidabin being jammed, going to Fabiosa, Wayne covering him. No posting is Philip Cesar. Abi King trying to guard him tightly. And we have a foul oh, called against oh, Toyota. Fernandez. It is called against Mon Fernandez. We have a timeout. We'll be right timeout. back. Atoyko got a score coming from the good bounds. And Steve, this is now the 121st meeting between these two great ball clubs. And uh, Crispa has the upper hand, winning 63. Good shot clock by Bates. 63 games to 57 wins of Toyota. We have a turnover. 
Now, when they lost after getting 21 straight victories to San Miguel, Tommy Manotok said, well, this may be a blessing because the pressure is off. I doubt that very much if he meant that they're going to take the game slightly. Well, I think that that loss brought the team back down to, uh, back down to earth, and they seem to be playing with such kind of vengeance. Unbelievable play by Bernard Fabiosa. The last time uh, Crisco played against Toyota was on May 29th, and Crisco won that game handily, 122 to 110. You won't believe this, but it's almost four minutes, and Toyota's... To zero. We have eight and 16 in the first period. It is a foul call against Quadlis. This is unbelievable, Steve. I think they have to bring in uh, Francis Arnais into the ball game very quickly just to settle things down for the team. Juan Fernandez almost took it away, and here is Billy Ray Bates trying to shuffle for it, and there is a technical foul call against Quadlis. And Twilight is very much disturbed against that foul call against him. Let's take a look on slow motion. There was a loose ball, and Arnie Twilight was going for it. And he might have been deliberate. He hit the ball into the face of Billy Ray Bates. Billy Ray Bates very cool about matters. He knows that he has to stay on the court, and this is the technical foul shot. And he doesn't maximize the opportunity, and we have still 13 to nothing. It's unbelievable. There's been a, a, a saran seal on top of that uh, Toyota goal. Nothing able to fall into the hoop. Great defense being applied here by Crispus. So the basket of Toyota may come from the outside. It bounced at the baseline. Last touch is Fabiosa, so it will be Toyota keeping. Two fouls called against Wadlis. One on Mon Fernandez. Fabiosa and Cesar, one apiece. Here's the money man looking for that break. Still nothing. Still nothing. That rim has been sealed. Kidaben quickly to Cesar. Even if the referee blew the whistle, you couldn't hear it. The fans are cheering so loud. Here's the big J and BRB staying close to him. Inside to King. One good fake. This could be the icebreaker. Coming with 7 and 27 in the first period. What a long drought. Yes, that first basket is always, uh, you know, very important, and I'm sure that now Toyota will get rolling. And true enough, a steal from Mon Fernandez and a foul call against Atoy Here is a substitution. Francis Sana is being dispatched by Edo Campo, and to cool down Twardless, he rests him. He was very much disturbed with the technical call against him. Okay, now Julius Wayne will move to the forward line. It'll be the old dynamic duo in uh, Arnaiz and Jaworski in the backcourt. While Julius only is 6'1", he's got tremendous leaping ability. Okay, let's take a look. It's Abe King now assigned to cover Billy Ray Bates, and Julius Wayne is going up against Philip Cesar. Cesar standing 6'3", short, and Kidaben still nothing, and King pulling down the third rebound. A steal by Billy Ray Bates. Juan Fernandez is the only one giving it quickly to Kidaben. on play. Julius Wayne may go in. Atoyko tapping it out, but as is a nice right there, going to Julius Wayne, and there is a foul call against Atoyko. Very quickly with the entry of Arnais, the pace has changed, Steve. Yes, Francis Arnais knows how to get the basketball players the ball in good shooting position. Try to go inside, but not all the way. He should pull up from about five feet away. Defense of Crispa is just too tough. Bound. Here is Francis Anais quickly to King. Call out shot. And here is Wayne. Good timing. Yes, Philly Ray Bates was caught going for the block shot. Julius Wayne streaking down court, saw the opportunity and took. You see Bates and Fabiosa combining exceptionally well. 16 to go. There is a call against Mon Fernandez. Called against Kidaben, a turnover. Well, the most important thing for the Toyota Ball Club now is not to panic, to try to just slow things down, get the ball to Mon Fernandez or to Julius Wayne, even to Abe King, who's been a very uh, potent offensive player. Quick pass to the money man. Good bounds. Mon Fernandez scoring his first basket. You recall, Steve, the first time that they met during elimination round, Crispa won by 10 points after the first. It was 33-23. The Big J turns around, a beautiful play. Back 
Grimm, second effort, third effort, still nothing from Kidabin. Here comes the fourth effort. And I'll tell you one thing, the referees are calling a very loose basketball game. This game is going to be very physical. The players are getting hit under the basket, and the referees are just letting the boys play basketball. But so far, probably they're seeing that there's no harm, no foul. Quick retaliation by Mon Fernandez. That's his fourth point. Yes, if the referees can keep the game under control and just let the guys play a physical game, as long as they're consistent in their calls, I think we'll see a super basketball game. Good fallout shot coming from Billy Ray Bates. He now has scored seven points. Back stopping him is Fabiosa for six points. Here's the money man. In deep, crowded. Second effort going the other side, and there's a foul on that attempt by Mon Fernandez. Foul, Kidabin. The foul is called against Kidabin. That's his first, bringing Crispa to their 15th foul. Three against Toyota. You see, on that play, Toyota was very smart. They isolated Mon Fernandez down low. And this way, there was very little chance for the Crispa Redmondizers to double team. Uh, the the uh, Toyota team cannot run into double coverage. Time out. We have a timeout. We'll be back. We have Mon Fernandez going to the foul line now and will receive uh, two shots from the free throw line. So far, Toyota has missed their uh, two attempts from the charity stripe. Fernandez makes the second, cutting down the lead. It's a 21 to 16 ball game. We have three and 50 to go in the first period. And as we watch Fabiosa looking for an open man, going to Kidabin, Kidabin brings it in and Kidabin continues to play strong. Well, that play was an isolation play. Get Gidabin open on the right side and let him take it to the hoop. Juan Fernandez being jammed by Fabiosa. It rolls out of the court. Last touch is Fabiosa. By the way, coach Tito Eduque saying, come to Kamayan and discover a whole new world on his second floor. Savor the flavor of Mechadong Dila and Bulaloste. Kamayan goes continental, pork and spoons if you wish. Second floor of Kamayan restaurant along Pasay Road, Makati. Nothing there from Abe King. Going to the money man. And that is the second effort. Yeah, it's actually turned out to be a very fortunate thing for Mon Fernandez that he missed his first attempt. He was fouled in the act of shooting. He made the shot. Chance for a three-point play. Second, Cesar just got a second personal foul. Possible slam here from Mon. And we will be choosing our Magnolia ice cream best player of the game right after this Chris Toyota match. Incidentally, our Magnolia ice cream flavor for the month of July is Tunay Nalanka. Oh, that's great. It's a different treat. You like it. It's a four-point game being enjoyed by Crispa. They were on top by 15 at the start of the first period. What a long silence by Toyota. Almost four minutes. Aerial pass broken up by Philip Cesar. A two-man substitution being applied here by Tommy Manotok. We okay. find a tremendous utility man here. Yes, we have a little bit of offense and a lot of defense. We have uh, Padim Israel coming in for some defense against Julius Wayne and Freddie Hubalde, who's been playing beautiful basketball in his last three or four games. Julius Wayne from long range. Good boxing out by Billy Ray Bates on Abbe King, preventing him from following up. Here's Hubalde, Wayne on him. Arnais and Fabiosa, they go a long way. Good hit coming from Padim Israel. Well, Abed Kidabin cannot take Padim Israel for granted. Even though Padim is a defensive specialist, he can burn you on offense. Here's Abed King, and there is a foul that he drew from Billy Ray foul Bates. Bates. The first foul on Bates brings Crispa to the seventh team foul. Abed King. Oh, Toyota has been miserable from the free throw line. Abbe King last May 29th against Crispa only had six points. That was the time when he came back from an injury on the nose. Pulled down one rebound and two assists. Keeps it alive, bouncing it to Israel. Julius Wayne and Fernandez were going together and it bounced beautifully to Hubalde. Well, the Redmondizers have been doing such a great oh, job on their oh, offensive no, no. boards. Uh, Gidabin has that ability to keep the ball alive. And, uh, you know, that's what Julius Swain spoke about in the interview with Danny Sombrano. Oh, it takes some time to get gelled. And that was an exact uh, example. Julius Swain fighting with his own teammate for the basketball. And after the while, you know, they'll get used to each other and they'll be able to 
you know, communicate with each other even during a split second. Noble statement coming from Julius Wayne. As a matter of fact, if you recall, he said, I have to make the adjustment. Mon Cruz coming in for Fabiosa, who just incurred his second personal foul, and Fabiosa contributed six points and pulled down two defensive rebounds. Jaworski on Obalde. Left flank, it is Kidabin. Pass broken up by the money man, going to a nice. Up he goes. And there we finally see the Toyota fast break. A four point game, 27 23 being enjoyed by the Red Monizers. A minute and 38. We are in the first period. <laughs> this first period has been a game in itself. Inside again intercepted. Julius Wayne this time. It's two on two. He crashes through the lane. Oh, beautiful. But a little bit too strong. What a spurt posted there by Julius Wayne. Billy Ray Bates, before he can do anything, is tagged by Arnais. It is a foul call against Francis. That is his first, bringing Toyota to the fourth team foul. Billy Ray Bates has been very quiet in this game. Perhaps, you know, he's just trying to get the locals involved to take some of the pressure off himself. That's true, because Billy Ray Bates loves to go five on five instead of just one on one. However, when the coach says apply it, he will go to an isolation play. Here's Obalde from long range, in and out. And Abbe King pulling down his third defensive rebound. The Big Jays all alone. Oh, that was just a great pass, super pass by Abe King, threading the needle. King on Bates. Chris Monty foul trouble. Call out shot. And Hobalde is fouled. It is Jaworski. And the Big J just got his first personal foul, bringing Toyota to their 15th foul with 45 seconds before the end of the first period. Top scoring for Toyota, nine points. Mon Fernandez has got two personal fouls. Here is Kidabin looking for room. Mon Cruz trying to tap it. Back again to Crispa. Here is Kidabin, and he bubbles. Crystal Red Renaissance, even the smallest man on the court, Mon Cruz, able to get in there for the offensive Kidabin. rebound. Kidabin going to the bench now. Philip Cesar coming back into the fray. You know, that's one occasion where Tommy felt that Kidabin had to get back his rhythm because maybe he was a little bit too tight. So here comes Cesar. He's assigned to keep an eye on Mon Fernandez. We have 20 to go in the first period. Cruz trying to sandwich Mon Fernandez, and we have... Illegal defense being called against Crispa. Yes, Billy Ray Bates. Ubalde. Oh, it was, Freddy Ubalde was too far off of his man. And they called the uh, defensive three seconds there. Juan Fernandez, probably the best foul shooter on the squad, will attempt. Well, Mon Fernandez, when they met for the first time May 29th, had 24 points, pulled down 11 rebounds and dished out two assists. But ever since, every now and then, Steve will tell you that Mon Fernandez is one money man that always comes up with double figures on three categories. Ten seconds before the end of the first. Arnaiz going to Mon Fernandez, seven seconds, up it goes. Yes, it is counted, beating the shot clock. Believe it or not, Toyota takes the lead, 28-27. Down by Forano. There is a foul called against Abbe King. A second and a half. Abbe King just got his first personal foul. Quickly to Bates. He can fire from long range. Good distance. So at the end of the first period is Toyota by one point. We'll be right back. We now enter the second period and we find Toyota on top by one point and they were silenced. The score then was 15-0 during the first quarter and Toyota's first basket came in with four and 31 seconds after. There you see the leading scores in the first period. Juan Fernandez keeping his team in the ball game with 12, Bates 7, Fabiosa 6, Ape King 5. We had no deadlock whatsoever during the first period. The big J quickly to Abbe King. Pass broken up by Israel. Quick hands. Cruz going to Cesar. Too strong. Abbe King now pulling down his fourth defensive rebound. Here's our nice going to the big J. Back and anticipated by Israel. It hit. 
the back of referee Inyosa, so Chris Press alive. They're down by one. Air ball coming from Padim Israel. The money man, but Billy Ray Bates is there. Block the big J, not making, it is making. You know, going back to that last play where the ball hit the referee, the rule on that play, the official is actually part of the court. And if that ball hits the official and stays in bounds, then the ball is in play. Steve, going back to the point that you made before the start of the game, how crucial is this for Toyota? Because their standing is only four and six, and the big J wants a basket. He gets hot by Hubalde. Yes, this game is very important for the Toyota team. They have a record of four and six. San Miguel with a record of four and seven. Watch this play here. That was a very flagrant foul, but Hubalde in his attempt to block the ball. He was uh, trying to block the ball. And uh, Sonny Jaworski has not gone to the bench in this game so far. The Big J playing very well for his team, keeping the momentum on the side of the Toyota Ball Club. Well, Toyota's got a great match this coming Sunday. They'll be going up against great taste. That's going to be a big battle. And then another tough one on July 14th against Andwai Run. So they are not really seeing it the light at the end of the tunnel. We have a foul called against Hobalde. No, we have a traveling call. It's a three seconds call against Crispa. Okay, so we a have turnover. A, yes, we have a substitution. First, let's take a look at the stats. Crispa shooting 43%, Toyota 39%. Neither team shooting that well from the floor. And we have Fabiosa coming back into the ball game, replacing Juan oh, Cruz. Cesar. And it is a foul call against Cesar. That is his third personal foul. Here comes Villamin for Cesar. And during this second period, for a minute and 40 seconds, Crispa is now silent. The money man, a little bit spear shot, and the Big J keeping it alive, but it falls to Hubalde. You have, the foot of Wayne. you have to give a lot of credit to two local players in this game. Abe King for doing a fine job on Billy Ray Bates and Padim Israel for doing an excellent job on Julius Wayne. Well, take a look at uh, Abe King. Aside from scoring five points, all coming in the first, pulled down four defensive rebounds while Padim Israel hit a basket in the first, but he's got that overall defensive look. Billy Ray Bates bouncing it once and then here comes the money man. A pitch going to... You know, it was intended for Arnais. Up he goes. Unbelievable play. Francis Arnais coming out of nowhere to get the pass and then going up against Billy Ray Bates. Getting it right back is William in. On that move of Arnais, actually, Fabiosa thought that he was by his lonesome, just waiting for that ball for that interception. But Arnais streaked over, got it, got the basket. It is now a five-point game being enjoyed by Toyota. They were down 15 to nothing. Good steal coming from TJ. Obalde backs up. It's two on two, and there's a cut by Villamin. And there you see Villamin with a lot of spirit, not staying in the backcourt, hustling up court with a chance either for a rebound or receiving the pass, which is exactly what happened. Checking in about uh, a minute and ten seconds, immediately Villamin has responded four points, but Arnais is hot, continues to score. Eight points now to his credit, made four in the first period. Yes, you know, when Francis came into the basketball game, it really turned things around for the Toyota Ball Club. Hobalde, the big J on him. If you'll notice also, Toyota has been able to stop Crispa on the fast break. Inside to Villamin, checked by Fernandez. Abe King saving it for Toyota. The big J setting up the play. Bates on King, takes it from outside. Third defensive rebound for Fabiosa. Hit the leg. Cross pass, bounce to the big man. You know, very sloppy play by the uh, Crystal Recognizers. Bernie Fabiosa had Billy Ray Bates wide open, but Fabiosa was too intense in his dribbling. And uh, too many fancy type of plays from Crispa, shades of 1982. Well, the situation here is that because of the traditional passion for each other, and as I said, definitely not love, they've been trying to upstage each other. And in the process, there is the sacrifice of basic, you know, the fundamental just goes to waste. And we have a referee stopping play. Could be a foul call against 
Israel, Padim Israel, guilty of the foul. That's his first. And we have a two-man substitution being applied by coach Tommy Manotto, continuously shuffling his team. We have Kidabit back in action. He should be getting his rhythm once more. Atoiko also in the game for Crispa. Here's the money man. Got the basket, side shot. It is now 16 big points for Mon Fernandez. Had 12 in the first period and two more in the second. Well, that's a very good substitution here by uh, coach Tommy Minotto. Billy Ray Bates was not uh, producing the way he usually does. Put him on the bench, give him a chance to think things out, and then bring him back into the game when he's really ready to play basketball. Wow, the worst. And Billy Ray Bates contributed seven in the first and pulled down six rebounds four and two and the big J just got his second Jaworski. personal foul the big J gets a big hand as he's recalled at the bench by Edo Campo oh big hand and here comes Chito Saga. how many points for Jaworski so far Jaworski seven made three in the first adding another four and pulled down one offensive rebound it's a nine point game the biggest lead of Toyota coming down 15 to nothing, and the silence of Crispa broken by Atoy Ko. Well, Atoy Ko has uh, been assigned to cover Julius Swain, so he has his hands full on defense as well. Juan Fernandez going up, getting the basket, and he continues to be the main man here for Toyota. 18 big points, 12 in the first, and another six in this second period. Ko looking for room, going up, in and out. Cobalde keeping it alive. Obalde, air ball. Tight on that shot by Villamil. No foul, an outlet pass going to King. One fake and up he goes, good roll. It's those long baseball passes that are really hurting the Crisper Red Renizers. Atoy Ko and Bernie Fabiosa are finding themselves too deep under the basket to get back on defense. Tommy Manothok really reaching in. Nothing from Atoy Ko and Mon Fernandez going to Julius Wayne. They're on top by 11 points. Julius Wayne and there is double dribble called against him and we have a timeout. We'll be right back. Pulang comes off the bench for Mon Fernandez and a good hit coming from Obalde. Four points to his credit. That's right, as you continue to scratch your head and you begin to wonder. 15-0, the start of the first period, the lead of Chris Red Manizers, that's their biggest. And then the first basket of Toyota coming in after 4 and 31 seconds. And shortened the drive by Fabiosa. Now they're on top by 9. Biggest lead was 11. Abiking puts it back to 11. Julius Wayne has only made four points, but he's tremendous on the overflow of the game. He has pulled down four rebounds. Here is Obalde. He's very sneaky, very smart. He's being jammed and goes to Kidaben. Arnaiz, Atoy Ko is there going through the paint. Oh, in and out. Volong is there, but he was stepping on the baseline. Red Benoises, I feel, have to be a lot more careful with their shot selections. They've been taking very poor shots from the floor, and uh, when you take bad shots, uh, your chances of getting an offensive rebound uh, go down. And when you get no offensive rebounds, that's when the Toyota team can fast break. Okay, what's happening, Steve, is that with the exception of Atoy Ko, most of the superstars of CRISPR Red Benoises have been firing from eight and below. So what Toyota was doing was just tighten up and try to jam the paint. Now that Bill Ray Bates is here, you know that he can fire from the outside and also inside. Well, that's definitely true. Oh, what happened for well. a while was that the uh, Red Benoises were actually playing defense against themselves. They were crowding the ball, too many players around the basketball. And that way Toyota could just play a, you know, a zone. One man can stop and the other man could go under the basket. In that particular sequence, Billy Ray Bates cleared the lane out. He called his players, let's move out of the shaded area, leave it open for people that are in motion. Well, he can do it. He made seven during the first quarter, and then adding another three, just saw him complete the slam for 10 points, and Billy just pulled down his fifth defensive rebound, plus two on offense, a total of seven so far. We have four and 25 before the end of the first half from Rainbow Territory, nothing there from Billy Ray Bates. Here's our nice, call keeping an eye on him. Slows down a bit. It's an eight-point game being enjoyed by Toyota. Bulao is open. He too was surprised, but he know he can do that. 
First basket for Bulao. Here is Varela seeing action for the first time. Oh, he plays a rugged defense. Yes, that's exactly why he is in the ball game. Here is Billy Ray Bates going up. And Loy Saga quietly getting his third defensive rebound. Wayne keeps him going. And again, the spin was a little bit too strong. And he's frustrated with that. Only made four points, all in the first. And Billy Ray Bates threw it. It is counted. And the bench of Toyota is up in question. Loisaga. It is a foul called against Loisaga. Okay, let's see if we can catch that one again in slow motion. I think it was a good call by the official because Billy Ray Bates did not continue his forward motion. You'll see he realized the defensive man stepped into, into view and Billy Ray Bates just cushioned himself a little bit. Well, ever since he was dispatched by Tommy Manotok, he has responded with six points, adding to his seven in the first total of 13. And Atoy Ford just took it away from Anais, zigzagging, getting away, and a good basket. Here is a rally posted now by Chris Pa. That's one thing under the uh, mentorship of uh, Tommy Minotok. Atoy Ko has become a much better defensive ball player. It's a five-point game being enjoyed by Toyota. Good fake by Bolao. Oh, that could have been a nice basket for him. He was fouled on the act of shooting. Goal. Point blank range. Very, very close, right underneath. And that is now the third personal foul called against Atoy Ko. On team fouls, four called against Crispa and three against Toyota. Oh, we'll see at halftime the shooting statistics for Toyota. Very poor from the free throw line. I believe they're shooting under 50% from the charity strike. Well, this could be their Achilles heel because they've just been a disaster from the line. We have the money man, the big man, Mon Fernandez, back in action. And Loisaga is recalled to the bench by Edo Campo. And Loisaga did well on defense, pulled down three rebounds. Balao with a split. Three points for him. 49 Toyota, 43 Crispa, 3 and 7 before the end of the first half. Blocking foul, call against Abbe King. King. That is the second personal foul of Abbe King. At this point, Steve, Julius Wayne has not been relieved. Do you think he can have the staying power? Well, uh, quite honestly, I don't know what Julius oh, Wayne was oh, doing oh. Uh, prior to his uh, invitation to join the uh, Toyota Ball Club, but Julius is a young guy. Always keeps himself in good uh, in good physical conditioning. Running shot coming from Kidabin. He has scored six points. It's a four-point game. It is still Toyota. Mon Fernandez looking for room. He was already sandwiched, but he managed to put it up. And there is a oh, foul. Villamil. It is called against Villamin. That's the first. We have a timeout. Time we'll be back. Please, the Big J returns to the game, and Edo Campo pulls out Bolao. Juan Fernandez at the line, and as we watch him take his free throws, looking for his 19th and 20th point, we will be choosing our Magnolia ice cream best play of the game right after this Christmas Toyota match. Incidentally, our Magnolia ice cream flavor for the month of July is that delicious Tunay Nalangka. It's a different treat. Hey, Steve. Lengua with mushrooms, callos, bacalao, Spanish white beans, oh my, cocido, oysters, au gratin, all these mouth-watering dishes are waiting for you at Doña Nena's restaurant at 8928 Anza Street, Bel Air Village, corner Makati Avenue. Good hit, six points for Villamin. Well, that was one of the few occasions where the Red Renoises actually set up a play and got the man the ball down low. Toyota led by 11 points on two occasions, 44-33, 46-35, and as you recall, Crispa's biggest lead, 15 points, 15 to nothing. It is Crispa ball. Well, there seems to be some kind of argument between the officials, and they're giving the ball to the Crispa Redmondizers. Quickly now to Abbe King. Billy Ray Bates is there, bringing it very close. Reverse spin. Well, if you're going to beat really ba Billy Ray Bates, you have to do something special. You just can't take the ball straight up against Billy. You have to reverse or head fake. From long range, nothing there. It goes overboard. 53 for Toyota, 47 for Crispa, and minute and 52 before the end of the first half. Cesar playing with three personal fouls. Kidabin, Bates, and Billy Bean, one apiece. Jaworski, King, and Mon Fernandez 
two personal fouls apiece and one against Arnaiz. Abe King crashing on Villamin and it could be blocking foul called against Villamin. That is the second personal foul on Villamin. Let's take a look here. Julius Wayne should have been rolling to the basket. You see Abe King making the drop pass, but Julius Wayne not yet gelling with his players. He probably didn't think that uh, Abe King could make such a great pass. Well, Abe King is being rested now by Edo Campo. We have Velosa back in action. A three bound for Kidabe. Here's Varela. He wants to take it, and he gets the basket. And as the saying from the camps of Crispa, when Varela shoots, how can you lose? Here is Rolosa, Bates on him. Juan Fernandez from 16. And Villamil just pulled down his second rebound. One on one. Safely to Billy Ray Bates. Quickly to Cesar. Oh, what a play. Without looking, Billy wow, Ray Bates just snapped the pass to Cesar. And it's a foul, the third foul called against the Big J. What the uh, Silver Coronas are doing is they're applying a lot of backcourt pressure, even on the big man after they get the rebound. And that's why the Red Venizers are finding it so difficult to fast break. Philip Sessa now scoring his fifth point, and Billy Ray Bates just took it, plucked it from the air. Eighth rebound. Traveling call, hold against Billy Ray Bates. We have a turnover. It is now a one-point game. Still Toyota, 53-52. We have 50 seconds before the end of the first half. They go to Wayne. Board shot. First basket of Julius Wayne after a long drought. Made four points in the first quarter. And his six point coming in in this last few seconds before the end of the first half. Cesar outside, inside to Kidabin, couldn't control it. Last touch, Kidabin, Toyota ball. Yes, 27 seconds to go in the ball game, in the uh, first half, rather. And 25 seconds, of course, on the shot clock. Let's see what Toyota does here. The Big J going to the big man. Julius Wayne safely to Relosa. 17 seconds. 10 on the shot clock. And there's a jamming foul called against Varela. That foul brings Crispa to the 17th foul. First foul on Varela. Yes, and Crispa should be very careful here not to commit the foul because they are over the limit. Toyota on top by three. 10 seconds. Julius Wayne is crowded. He goes up. And Billy Ray Bates comes down with it. We have three seconds to go. And from behind, it is the loss of fouling Bates. Foul Wayne. No, it is Wayne. That is the first personal foul call against Julius Wayne, bringing Toyota to the 17th foul. Yes, and only 1.5 seconds to go. Same situation as we had at the end of the first quarter. And we have... Yes, we have a pushing foul. Fernandez. Fernandez. It is Fernandez. Very costly foul. Uh, number one, Billy Ray Bates will go to the free throw line for two shots. And also, Mont Fernandez will pick up his third personal foul. That's a situation where they probably should have rested Mont Fernandez. I mean, of course, speaking in uh, retrospect, it's very easy to uh, be a coach, but uh, with only one and a half seconds to go, you should try to rest players that are prone to commit the fouls. Well, don't be surprised if Billy Ray Bates intentionally misses this. No, he doesn't. He just got his 15th point. Still a minute, and oh, it is Varela picking it, but he had the ball when the horn sounded. So, at the end of the first half, it's a one-point game. Same situation at the end of the first quarter. It is 55 Toyota and Crispa 54. Steve and I will be right back. Toyota was really moving that ball around well. And when you throw that long pass and a player is uh, open and dribbles up to the basket, it is counted as an assist. Even if the player takes five or six dribbles, if you hit him on a long-range pass and he goes in uncontested, then they credit that as an assist. Well, Steve, with both squads running, I'm sure you have a big story on fast breaks. Running and gunning, because the Red Renizers made 23 points on the fast break, and the Toyota team made 25 points off the fast break. And that tells us a couple of things. First of all, that tells you that when you go up against 
the opposition in a set-up defense, it's very difficult to score because 50% of the scoring output from both teams has come from the free, from the uh, fast break. So you're much better off trying to run, not giving the uh, other team an opportunity to set up defensively. Even if you should make, a, even if the other team should make a basket, get the ball out of bounds quickly, move the ball up as fast as you can. Okay, we now go into the third. And we have Mon Fernandez missing after the drive. It is Chris but down by one point, 54 to Theodos 55. Billy Ray Bates going to Padim Israel, crowded by the money man, Mon Fernandez. Quadless back in action. He may bring it all the way, and at the last second, going to the big J. It is a charge foul, offensive foul, called against Twadless. He couldn't break in time. No count on the basket from the big J. Well, you could see in the start of the second half, it's a lot more calm than it was in the start of the, uh, the, of the uh, ball game. Both teams now trying to run their plays and playing very patient offense. Here is Billy Ray Bates suspending himself and getting that basket for his 17th point. The first quarter won by Toyota by a slim point, 28-27. They came out even at the end of the second period, 27 all. Kidaben trying to save it after breaking up play. The score at the moment, 56-55. And Jaworski playing with three personal fouls together with Mon Fernandez, two against Twadless, King and Legaspi one apiece. Here's Abbe King, and there was no roll from Mon Fernandez. Legaspi is seeing action for the first time for Toyota. Yes, that was a pick and roll play, minus the roll. <laughs> minus the roll. And as a matter of fact, Abbe King was surprised that Mon Fernandez did not slide. And Mon makes up for it. 22 points, here is BRB, he can fire from rainbow territory, loves to move in, and at the last second, Hobalde lost it, he was already looking at the basket. Legaspi to the big J, back pass, and Quadness fails to complete. Well, Toyota could not get into the syndrome that uh, Crispa committed in the first half, and that's those fancy type of passes. If you can make the straight bounce pass, you're much better off. Our officials, Mesos de la Cruz, Santorina, and Inosa. Standing room only. Fabiosa is open. Quickly to Duadless. Viking him is Israel. Now Hobalde, he slides in. That's a poor shot selection by Arnie Duadless. He was one against four. Bounce pass to Fabiosa deep. It is counted. It is counted. And Jaworski just got his fourth personal foul. Let's take a look at the uh, players in foul trouble. I'm sure that's going to play a predominant role in the basketball game. Looking at the Redmondizers, you have two players with three personal fouls. That's Atoy Ko and uh, Philip Cesar, two key players. And for the Toyota team, Jaworski with four, Fernandez with three. Well, the backcourt players from both squads play rugged defense, so you will find this result. And the big J now is on his fourth personal foul. Cesar has got three, Fabiosa in Israel, two apiece, one on Bates and Kidaben. Here is Twadless looking for the shot, making it. And you could see, uh, well, you can't see, well, you'll see pretty soon, Julius Wayne waiting on the wings to come into the ball game, probably for uh, the big J, Sonny Jaworski. Julius will move into the backcourt. Believe it or not, but we're just experiencing for the first time the very first deadlock at 59 all. Hobalde not breaking it, and Mon Fernandez controlling and crashing the board. That's his 10th rebound, 7-3. and three. Foul, Fabiosa. It is a foul. That's the third Jaworski. one on Fabiosa, and Jaworski is rested by Edo Campo because of four personal fouls. Here comes Julius Wayne, the B. Fabiosa. And Tommy Manotok rests Fabiosa, and he's got Mon Cruz taking over. Mon Cruz keeping an eye on Legaspi. Yes, that's a good matchup, Mon Cruz and Emeril Legaspi, two young ball players with a lot of fighting spirit. Oh, what a great move coming from the big man, the money man. 24 points. You know, Mon Fernandez realizes that the import on his team is only six foot one. He's not going to do a lot of scoring. Mon Fernandez knows he has to be the top man if Toyota's going to win. Well, Mon Fernandez has got 24 points, tying his score of last May 29th. And Cobalde, it is back to Israel. Tight shot, getting the basket. Well, that was a great move by Padim Israel. He knew he had nowhere to go. The best thing to do was get the ball up against the rim. Fortunate for him, it went into the basket. Now, this is our second deadlock at 61 all. We have 8 and 49 in the third period. Here is Abe King running shot, getting it. Oh, he learned that one from Mon Fernandez. 
13 points is credit, made 11 in the first half of play, aside from pulling down five rebounds, Abe King. Big factor here, here is Mon Cruz going to Ubalde, Wayne on Ubalde. Back again to Mon, takes it closer, taking a shot. And Mon Fernandez crashing the boards. Eight defensive rebound and three offensive. Foul called against Mon Cruz. Kidabin has been very quiet in this basketball game. That is true. I think Kidabin has got it to be defensive oriented. He knows that Mon Fernandez is hot. Look at Mon move and he almost had it. Tap going to Legaspi. Fall out shot in and out. That's exactly what it was. A fall out shot. The ball fell right out of the rim. And Kidabin pulling down his 10th rebound. 5-5. Five and five, Nothing from Kidabin. And Kwadnes bubbling but recovering. He's dribbling the ball a little bit too high. Billy Ray Bates losing control. Still has possession. Here's Padim bouncing it to Kidabin. And Abbe King is right there. Three seconds. We're having great difficulty from both squads on the transition, Steve. Well, a player has to realize that when he is out of control, the best thing to do is stop dribbling the ball. Don't continue, continue moving forward if you don't have complete possession of the basketball. Juan Fernandez, 24 points. Hot man. Julius Wayne, again hit the back rim. As you said, during the first half, it seems that there is a lid right there on the rim. Third personal foul called against Padim Israel, bringing now Crispa to the 14th foul, two only called against Toyota. Julius Wayne on his debut and his return, wearing the shirt of Toyota, at 15 points in the Cagayan de Oro encounter against Gilby's Gimlets. They lost that game. Here is Wayne now. Made think, six points so far. I think Ed Ocampo and the uh, Toyota team is expecting about 20 points out of Julius Wayne per ball game. Just about 20, nothing more than that, and a lot of good defense. Well, you can expect that the minute he goes in second gear, because Julius Wayne, if you recall, last he was averaging under 30 points per game. But then again, he was playing with the Utex Wranglers, and on the Utex Wranglers, they were expecting a lot of more points from their import. Toyota Ball Club, he can play the role of the Bye, passing Mom, guard. We'll be right back. Seven and ten seconds before the end of the third, and that is Mon Fernandez, the hot man. I think that, uh, you know, Philip Cesar should be in the basketball game now, probably there to uh, cover uh, Mon Fernandez. Mon Fernandez has been making mincemeat out of Abit Kidabin. Well, Philip Cesar is incurring three personal fouls, had five points during the first half, but pulled down five rebounds. Kidabin almost had it. Quickly now to Abbe King. Billy Ray Bates is there. Up he goes. Nothing. And second effort by Twadness. Cruz, good jamming on his part. Being crowded now by Abbe King. So far, 11 points scored here by Toyota to seven of Crispa. We have another turnover. Tight passing here by Crispa. Look at those turnovers. 19 turnovers for the Redmondizers and 13 for the Toyota Ball Club. Here's Philip Cesar coming into the ball game now, and he's going to be assigned to Mon Fernandez. Cruz. Nick Boulan coming into the basketball game for Arnie Tuadlas, and Mon Cruz taking his seat on the bench. Tito Varela coming in for some action. Well, Cesar better catch fire because... Look out! Here comes Peter Ray Bates. Gently. 19 points, made 15 in the first half of play. Two baskets now in the third period. Julius Wayne goes through the paint. Up he goes. And he gets fouled as he goes to that follow-up. It is the fourth personal foul called against Philip Cesar. Bringing Chris Pott to the 15th foul. Let's take a look at this in slow motion. Julius Wayne going up, avoiding the offensive Cesar. foul. Going back up. Now that will be a side throw-in. That ball is not uh, foul shots because that was a tip-in attempt. Had he made it, it would have and, and been fouled, he would have gone to the free throw line. But since he missed, it's only a side throw in. And Tommy Manotok does not take a chance on Cesar. He's got four personal fouls. Just wants to talk to him a little bit. And we have William in coming in. But Tommy Manotok returns Philip Cesar to the game. Thriller as vintage brings to your TV screens Amo, starring today's hottest action king. 
Rudy Fernandez together with Sandy and the Long. Don't forget, I'm all Friday, July 15th, 9.30 p.m. via TV 13. 21 points for BRB, Billy Ray Bates. There is a foul called against Tito Varela. That is his second. We have 5 and 39 in the third period. Inbounding is Julius Wayne. And when one goes over the list of basketball coaches who have been successful in the basketball permanent, one will conclude that guards make better coaches. This is now your Did You Know portion. Well, did you know that Toyota's special coach, Ed Ocampo, together with Gilby's coach, Turo Valenzona and Tanguay coach Freddy Webb all were guards during their active playing days in basketball. What about Pingoy Pankson? No, he sat on the bench. And Abe King, 15 points, 11 during the first half. But I ate a lot of oranges. <laughs> Here is Cesar. Board shot. 4 and 56. Julius Wayne skying, saving it, bouncing it, and we have a turnover. Philip Sessa taking it away from Abe King, who could not control. And again, the backcourt pressure by the Toyota team on the ball carrier, not allowing the Redmond Isers to fast break. Billy Ray Bates, double check by Fernandez, but Villamin scores for Crispa. This Good defense by Mon Fernandez. This is the best defense I've seen applied to Billy Ray Bates so far in this conference. Don't look now, but Crisper Redmanizers on top by one point. It is 69-68 with four and 17 in the third. Francis Anais has got things in his mind. It is a foul. All against Varela. You had a close-up on him. What a crown he's got. Hobalde is pulled out by Tommy Manotto. Can we have Atoiko? He can fire from the outside, but it's been off and on. Crisper now is in team foul trouble. They're over the limit. Abbe King taking it from 21, nothing there. That's not his favorite location. Well, Abe King uh, is a little bit intimidated by the presence of Billy Ray Bates, and Abe King has been forced to take outside shots this evening. Here comes Billy Ray Bates. It is counted, and a jamming foul. foul probably called King. against Abbe King. That is the third on Abbe King. We have a timeout. We'll be right back. At the moment, we are under four minutes with Chris by enjoying a three-point lead, but Bates has the opportunity for a slam here, and as we watch him, we will be choosing our Magnolia Ice Cream best player of the game right after this Chris Toyota match. Incidentally, our Magnolia Ice Cream flavor for the month of July is that delicious tuna in Nalanka. It's a wonderful treat. Wayne on a big drive, going to Balao, who just checked in a little while back, completing the play. Well, that's where Julius Wayne could be most valuable to this ball club. Using himself as a decoy, penetrating to the hoop, and then dishing off. Fernandez and Abbe King playing with three personal fouls apiece. Balao has got two. They go to the air, and Billy Ray base losing it at the base. Tapped by Mon Fernandez. No foul on that occasion. Now you see it's a different philosophy for the Redmondizers. They're going into Billy Ray Bates much more often. And Billy Ray Bates so far has scored eight points in this third period. Villamin. And there is a push foul called against Billy Ray Bates. It is not contested. And Abbe King does a little theatrical actor just in case the referees did not notice it. And Bates was probably telling himself, I just flicked him a bit. So it's a foul on Bates. That is his second personal foul. And yes. since they're in team foul trouble, Steve, King goes to the line. Yes, uh, the, the light was not on. The players did not realize that there was uh, an over-the-limit violation. And Abe King will go to the free throw line here for two shots. So far, Toyota has only three team fouls. And Pidaben is being dispatched by Tommy Manotto. Bates will probably be arrested. And Bates leaves the court he has scored so far 23 points and pulled down 13 rebounds and that is eight and five now let's see how the Redmondizer team plays without their import Billy Ray Bates it's an occasion that uh, Tommy Manotok has decided to feed an all Filipino five for Crispa Atoy does his move 
Ten points for Atoyko, made eight in the first half. Here is Mon Fernandez looking for room, maneuvering Kidaben, and there's a cut by Abe King. Good play. That was just a great pass by Mon Fernandez. Cross court right through the lane. 19 points for Abe King responding to that snap pass coming from Mon Fernandez. Wayne on call. Wayne knows that Atoyko can drill you from afar. Cesar giving it to his buddy. Hit the back rim, and we have a foul. Fabiosa, he sparks uh, a lot of the movement here. You know, he, he can really go into second gear. And the other players, good hit coming from Kidabin. That's his eighth point. Now, this is relatively a slow type of uh, play being applied by the Red Bonizers. Now, when TJ comes back, I'm sure all of them will go into second or third gear. Abbe King maneuvering, but Varela just stripped it away from him. Arnaiz is there. He keeps on going, and he makes the basket. Well, Varela found himself uh, in a one-on-two situation. He knew there was nobody else to pass to. That's the only time Tito Varela will shoot the ball. And because of that layup of Tito Varela, pushes Crispa to a one-point lead. 77-76. Elegant shot coming from the money man. Here is Cole looking for a streaker on the paint. It's a good shot block. Going to Wayne quickly now to Abbe King. Forward to Arnaiz. Varela's the only one there. And Abbe King gets the score. Quick ball movement and good passing here by Toyota. It's a three-point game. Gidaben uses the board. Okay, Gidaben is finally coming back to life. And he should start taking advantage. Mont Fernandez is quite tired. He's been on the floor uh, the entire ball game. Maybe for just a couple of minutes he was on the bench. Well, Gidaben has only made... 10. This is very far from his 23 points and 19 rebounds of May 29. Here is Varela. He drives once more. Could have been counted. He was fouled in the act of shooting. And Wayne apologizes to him. It is the second personal foul called against Wayne. Okay, Sonny Jaworski coming into the ball game now. Abe King coming out. And uh, Jaworski will go into the backcourt along with uh, Francis Anais, Julius Swain will now move to the front court. And this is the, uh, the beauty of having a guy like Julius Swain. With Kevin Porter, the only thing you could do is leave him in the back court. But with Julius Swain, you could move him in from off guard to point guard to small forward to even big forward if you have to. Absolutely right, because Julius Swain has an instant picture of the activities on the court. He is right there and is immediately in the framework of the game. Well, this is only our third deadlock at 80 all. Abbe King now on the bench after contributing 21 points, made 11 in the first half, adding another 10 in the third, and pulled down five rebounds. Jaworski keeping it alive for Toyota. And a great shot block by Gidaben on Julius Wayne. And Gidaben just got carried away and about to climb the boards. <laughs> I haven't seen him do that. Never. Watch it. This is a beautiful sight. Let's see if we can go all the way through with this play. Up he goes. One, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> and Toyota continues to be miserable from the line. Yes, these missed foul shots will definitely hurt the Toyota team. I mean, as much as we've been, uh, you know, downplaying the uh, Christopher Redmondizers, it's still an 80-all game. And the reason that we've been a little bit uh, downplaying the Redmond Eisen is because they came in at such a clear favorite in this ball game. They have a 9-1 record, whereas the Toyota team has a 4-6 record. That is true, and don't forget, the first time they met during phase one of the elimination round, they blasted Toyota by 12 points. Here is Cole, he is open. 12 looks, points for Cole. Yes, and it looks like the momentum is starting to go in the favor of the Redmond Eisen's very slightly, but this all Filipino uh, five for Tommy Minotok has risen to the occasion. We have seven seconds before the end of the third, enough time for Toyota to be able to get this lead. They're down by one. Here is Volau, and there is no foul. Kidabe just pitched it up towards their basket, and we have at the end of the third, Crispa by one, 82-81. We'll be right back. Well, Pings, as you suggested, when... Uh the, the Crispa Red Marizes look a little sluggish. Uh, Bernie Fabiosa now coming into the basketball game, as well as uh, Abe King coming in for Nick Boulogne. 
Don't forget that the delayed telecast game is full of scoring, a lot of rugged defense there, and a big surprise for you. Because during halftime, we have the superstar being interviewed by our man on the ball. And I'm referring to Nora Onor. Call is open from long range. Nothing there. The money man gets fouled by Kidaben. Foul Kidaben. Take a look at the scoring by period. It can't be much closer. Toyota up by one after the first, tied in the second, and in the third period, Crispa up by two. Back to Abbe King, and he finds Julius Wayne open. Oh, that ball slipping out of the hands of Julius Wayne, almost missing the easy one. Well, he held his breath now. It's a one-point game being enjoyed by Toyota. They could have been leading a little bit more, but I think they were just awful from the line. Yes, the Toyota team is shooting 71% from the floor, which is not bad if you only took 10 shots. But they've taken 24 shots. They've missed seven from the free throw line. Bad experience from Toyota that inbound was just a disaster. And Cesar increasing the lead now to three points. There's a cut by Abbe King pulling up. Abbe King joining hands with Mon Fernandez. Mon has got 30 points and 23 by Abbe King. Here is Kidaben, is playing with four personal fouls, looking for room, getting the basket, putting it up. Somehow you wonder why he was not doing that the entire evening. Here is Arnaiz, being hounded by Fabiosa, the big J. Juan Fernandez, head and shoulder move, elegant shot. Juan Fernandez with 32 big points. Made 20 during the first half, but what's great about Mon Fernandez is pulled down 13 rebounds, 10 and 3. Here is Atoy Korn, nobody there to pick him up. Well, Got away a, from Julius Wayne. That's the 14th point of Atoy Korn, and he's had opportunities to score. I think they're going to have to look to Atoy Korn for the rest of this ball game. We have 9 and 45 to go. It's a three-point game being enjoyed by Crispa. It's 90-87. Bates on Abbe King. Bates is playing with two personal fouls. The big J going to our nice. Moves it closer, and he is fouled in the act of shooting by Atoy Cole. That's the fourth on Atoy Cole. Crispa is now with two personal, Wayne. two team fouls, none on Toyota. Wayne is pulled out by Edo Campo. We have Balang right back. Well, this is a good substitution by Edo Campo. Julius Wayne had not gone to the bench the entire ball game, and uh, he doesn't want to have a tired Julius Wayne on the court with three or four minutes to go in the ball game. So Julius will probably sit on the bench for two minutes now. Well, Julius Wayne, aside from making 10 points for Toyota, has pulled down five rebounds, but he's got two personal fouls. Warning on Bates. Got to behave and looks down. The morning again, Christian. Big draw, big attraction here at the PBA. Kudray Bates has been, uh, you know, very quiet this evening. I'm not talking about his point production, but also in his temperament. He has not risen his hands in the air, the usual sign Billy Ray Bates gives after a nice play. Billy Ray Bates had 51 points, 11 rebounds during their first meeting, May 29. And counter steal by Cesar, quick hands, and call going back to Cesar. 11 for Philip Cesar, made only five during the first half of play. Here is Mon Fernandez. A little bit too strong. Atoy call for Crispa. Going to Fabiosa. In and out, but Kidabin was there, still nothing. Fabiosa keeping it alive. No he foul. It shot. No foul. Rugged play. Bulong. Toyota down by three. Bulong cuts it down to one. Bulong having a lot of confidence from the outside. Well, so far, Bolaung has contributed seven points, made only three during the first half, another four here in the second half, two rebounds, playing with two personal fouls. Atoy Cole loves to do this, watch him. And Mon Fernandez has been crushing the board. So far, 11 defensive rebounds, plus three offense. Bolaung, nothing there in the second attempt, but Arnaiz, oh, he lost it to Fabiosa, just took it away from his hands. And there is a crash foul, there is a charge foul, all against Fabiosa. Go. Let's take a look at this on slow motion. Fabiosa waiting a little bit too long to make the pass to Gidabin. Fernandez waiting in good position. Fabiosa. And Fabiosa is pulled out by coach Tommy Manotov to pull him down a bit because he just incurred his fourth personal foul. 
He has pulled down six rebounds and contributed nine points so far. Vadim Israel back in action for Crispa. Arnais getting away from the sandwich, bring it all the way in. The 12th point of Arnais puts back Toyota in the lead by one point. It is 93-92, 7 and 50. Here is Bates firing from Rainbow Territory, getting it! Okay, this is the time that Billy Ray Bates comes through. He usually starts tossing up those three pointers right about now. Here's Mon Fernandez. Out to Arnais, Varela is right there. Israel keeping an eye on Jaworski. Good pass back door, and we have a foul on Kidabin. That is the fifth Kidabin. personal foul on Kidabin, bringing Crispa to the fourth team foul. Well, actually, Mon Fernandez had an opportunity to go straight up with the basketball. He might be a little Kidabin. bit tired, and it turned out to be a little bit better since Kidabin picked up his uh, personal foul there. And coach Tommy Manotok is pulling out Kidabin because of the five personal fouls. He puts in William in instead, and Kidabin hit 12 points and pulled down 12 rebounds, six and six. Again, the foul shooting killing the Toyota ball club. After this match, win or lose, I think Ed Ocampo is going to ask all of his players to line up one after another there in the free line for one week. Yes, and whoever misses a foul shot is forced to run some laps. <laughs> this happened, remember, remember, remember school days? <laughs> it's seven and 20. One point game being enjoyed by Crispa. Stretched further by Billy Ray Bates. He's alive and well. After making 23 in the first three quarters, another seven for a total of 30 so far. By the way, after this match comes our regular feature, Crosby Inside Basketball. Andy House topic for tonight is on resolution of ties. Don't miss it. Billy Ray Bates. Sidestepping the man, going through with a lot of English on the ball. It's a five-point game with six and fifty to go. 99-54. Crispa, and there's a foul called against oh, Billy Ray Bates. That's his third. Now Bates has to be very careful. They have, have already given him a warning. And if he just opens his mouth, says anything, the referees are going to give him a technical. And on team fouls, five against Crispa and four against against Toyota in this. Well, the way Toyota's shooting from the free throw line, I don't know how much of an advantage that really is. Mon Fernandez, nothing from him, and there is... Called against the big J. He is now in trouble. He's got five personal fouls. We have a timeout. We'll be right back. Time left, 6 and 35, with Crispa on top by five points, 99-94. We would like to remind all PBA fans that starting Sunday, July 3rd, the PBA games will be covered nationwide on radio by the Voice of the Philippines, which is 8, it is 918 KHZ on your radio dials. Bulaong on Cesar, back again to him. Billy Ray Bates low posting. Cesar was already trapped, but he was able to get the basket. That's a very tough shot. The defense of Toyota was concentrated around really Billy Ray Bates, and they took the ball right in. Now you can see the power, the consistent power of CRISPR Red Manizers. They've been moving slowly but surely forward. They're on top, 101, 94 Toyota. Mon Fernandez looking for room, straight shot. Yes, that was an isolation play for Mon Fernandez. Keep the middle open and let Mon Fernandez wheel and deal. First quarter won by Toyota by one point, and then they came out even in the second. And the third, it was Crispa by two, 28, 26. Good basket coming from Billy Ray Bates. Now he's been attacking 34 points. You know, usually uh, you expect spectacular points from Billy Ray Bates. Tonight they've been just been regular points, and he's come up with 34 of them. Arnais going through, nothing, a little bit short, and they go to Varela, give it to him. Varela with one of his high games this year, seven points. Career high, seven points. That's the reason as to why Tommy Marotok has kept him, not only because he's been scoring, but he's been playing rugged defense and been hounding Arnais, and Toyota throws it away. Bulaong is pulled out by Edo Campo. Now is the time, and this is the right time. Yes, Julius Wayne. Yes, and this is a very crucial moment now for Toyota. They're down by nine points. The third quarter shooting statistics, Crispa 48%, Toyota only 42. Jaworski is playing with five personal fouls. King and Mon Fernandez, three apiece. Israel has got three, four incidentally. And we have a traveling call, called against Crispa. We have a turnover. 
A timeout. We'll be right back. Time left, four and thirty-nine, and we have a foul called against Varela. That is his fourth personal foul. No, it is a foul called against Padim Israel. Fourth personal foul. We have leading scorer, Steve. Okay, for Toyota, it's not their import. It's the local player, Mon Fernandez, 35 points. Bates, 34 for the Redmondizers. Then you see Atoy Cole, Philip Cesar, 14, 13, 12. King, 23. Francis Sinai is 10. Julius Swain with 10 points. I think what has happened to the Redmondizers, uh, to the uh, Toyota team, is that the uh, players that are on the court were just wore down. Abe King uh, playing uh, almost the entire ball game. Same held true for uh, Mon Fernandez and uh, Francis Sinaias. Whereas for the uh, Redmondizers, Manotok was bringing players in and out of the game. Here's Anais getting nothing from the line, and Philip Cesar just pulled down his sixth rebound. That's true, Steve, because Edo Campo just kept a nucleus in the game. Yes, yeah, just about six or seven players uh, getting playing time for our Campo, whereas Tommy Minotok used nine players with equal time distribution. And these players responded, and we have action being stopped by referee Yosa. It is a foul called against Abi King. That is the fourth personal bringing Toyota to only the second team foul. Six already called against Crispa. We are under four minutes. Here is Varela. It is counted. This is a new talent being surfaced here by Varela. Well, let's take a look at this. Tito Varela has nine points. Watch this play. Billy Ray Bates guarding it down low to uh, Tito Varela. Varela has nine points. Take that ten. Tito Varela has ten points, and so does Julius Wayne, the import for Toyota. Up he goes, nothing there, being distracted by Billy Ray Bates. Or Nigel's just got his second personal foul. The main factor here, keeping it really motivated, is Varela. Cesar let that go. It's a four and two break. They go to our nice. Blocked by Varela. Not only is he scoring, continues to play rugged defense. Foul Varela. And the foul of Varela, that's his fourth, brings Crispa to their seventh team foul with three and 31 to go. Let's take a look. Mon Fernandez stopping at the foul line as you should do on a fast break. Anais is taking it right up. This is a nightmare from the line coming from Toyota. Yes, the Toyota Ball Club now down by 11 points. But Crispa is over the limit. Oh, they missed two free throws. Crispa by 11 points with 3 and 20. Bates! He's got Flourish and he steals from Jaworski. Up he goes! He picks his spot. And he blocks Jaworski, but draws a foul. You can almost expect that foul Billy Ray Bates. Bates is like a volcano. He <laughs> do his thing, but the flourish will come when you want it. We have a timeout. We'll be right back. Time left, 2 and 53, and we have Crispa hosting for the second time their 15-point lead. It started at 15 to nothing, and now 112 and 97. And Toyota continues to be a nightmare from the line. Boy, they've missed four opportunities in their last four shots from the charity stripe. Incidentally, on the delayed telecast, any game between Gilpies Gimlets and Great Taste has to be super. And this game was no exception. The game equaled the conversion high with the teams combining for 287 points. Both imports played to the maximum with Massey scoring 65 points on 70% shooting. And as an added treat, Danny Sembrano also had an interview with superstar Nora Onora at halftime. That we, you will enjoy. We have Ed Cordero in the game now for the Toyota team. Ed is a very good three-point shooter. Ed Ocampo realizes that this game is very far away and he needs some three-point shots. Well, here's a treat here, import versus import. Ed Ocampo asking Julius Wayne to keep an eye on base. He intercepts the play.
Arnaiz continues to struggle, and Cesar bubbles a minute and 45. Big 15-point lead posted by the CRISPR Redmondizers, and they really wore down the Toyota team. They wore them down to the ground. Atoyko gets fouled by Julius Wayne, who's been scrambling. Wayne. And Julius Wayne just got his third personal foul, bringing Toyota to the fourth team foul with a minute and 39. The fans can smell blood. They know when to leave. So they stand up, and Crispa heading towards their 10th win versus one loss. And this is the reason why I did not believe Fabiosa inside, but gently following up is Cesar. When Tommy Manotok said that the pressure was off, sure they lost to San Miguel, he was glad about that because the pressure was off. I think what really happened behind the scenes is that he hyped the drill and tightened the defense and the shooting power of the Redmondizers. I think they really worked overtime. Yes, I think that loss uh, had a very good effect for the CRISPR team. They were no longer thinking about the consecutive victories. They were more concentrated with playing good ball. Billy Ray Bates hanging on the rim to prevent himself from being injured. Maybe it's the time to pull out and rest Billy Ray Bates. He has demonstrated again here his power and uh, Earlier, he was playing 5-on-5, five five, and then he was allowed by his coach to go and really show his stuff. He did this fine. And Bates is rested by coach Tommy Manotok, and here comes Humalde. And Billy Ray Bates contributed 40 big points and pulled down a total of 14 rebounds. Well, nine and five. Billy Ray Bates really did not want to go out of the ball game. But uh, Coach Tommy Minotok showed Billy that there was less than one minute to go in the ball game. And Billy Ray Bates very happy that his team won the basketball game. And Edo Campo Jaworski pulls out the big J. And here is Legaspi. You know, with the standing Steve of Toyota entering into this encounter with a four and six, and they're headed to a loss, so that'll be four and seven. They've got very, very tough assignments. Yes, they have to play great taste on Sunday, July 3rd, and then they go up against the very tough Eco Tandawai team on July 14th. Very tough. That's going to be a very physical game, and both of these teams, Tandawai and Toyota, really fighting for position. I think they have actually three basketball. Oh, no, this is the other one. They have, I think, three games left. There should be another one after yes, that Yes, it one. is Gallery Dominic, so the experts here are giving it to Toyota, but I guess great taste and Tandwai, that's really the, giving them a run for the money. A rainbow shot from our nice. Here is Obale, he's open. We have 23 seconds. It's a one game for the Redmondizers. So after this encounter, it will be... 64 wins versus 57 wins of Toyota. Upper hand being enjoyed by the Red Manizers. Ed Cordero goes to the line. He was fouled in the act of shooting. It is a foul call against Cesar. Let's take a look at the players that really got uh, playing time from coach Tommy Minotto. You have Philip Cesar, Patim Israel, Atoy Cole, Freddy Hubalde, you know, the local players that are on the court now. You also have uh, Villamin, Kidabin, Varela, they had about seven or eight players that shared the playing time for the Crystal Redmondizers. And they didn't also have their bug. And this is the bug that moves from left to right, back and forth. Cristobal, you know that he can hit maybe seven or 11 points. And we have Cordero, a points. rainbow shot from Cordero. There goes the Hornets, kind of that shot of Cesar. So officially, at the end of this contest, we have Crispa, 124, and Toyota, 108, a victory for the Redmanizers. Before Steve and I continue, we turn you back to our studios.